Hello and welcome to another Watercolor Wednesday. Today we will be painting a jellyfish and I did it in a small sketchbook that I have, but feel free to adapt this to make it as large as you would like. Can't wait for you to join along. The supplies you'll need for this painting are watercolors in any colors that you like. And I also used white gouache, which is a thicker consistency watercolor that has some acrylic in it. So if you have any kind of white paint, you'll be able to do the same technique. Uh, you'll also need small round watercolor brush, watercolor paper, and either a drawing of a jellyfish or you can use the jellyfish outline that I've provided in the comment section. So to begin, I am drawing in my jellyfish which uh, the outline for this is actually very straightforward because you only need the dome of the jellyfish drawn in and then uh, the tentacles you're actually going to paint in kind of freehand later on. So I just draw in the top part of the jellyfish and then I draw a little like just oval across the bottom where I know that the tentacles will go so that I do a leave a little bit of white space right now because I'm going to add in the background with some light blue and I don't want to totally cover this yet because I want to make sure that my tentacles will stand out in this area so I'm just gonna do the light blue background all around the sides of the paper to begin. So after the light blue base layer has dried, the next step is going to be to take this darker blue and add some, I guess, just variation to the water. So I'm going to do some darker stripes across and then once I rinse my brush and I have a dry brush, I'm just going to blend it out as much as the paint will let me in each of the stripes. And what I'm going for here is I want to give just some of that variation that it would look like underwater. Um, as I blend this out, I'm going to not worry about the part where the tentacles are going to be because in water you would see the blue through the tentacles. Um, then I add some water to my brush and blend the paint out a little bit more and I'm just trying to get some just blotches that uh, have a bit of depth and different color to them. So next I'm going to go through and do the same thing with uh, green and this is just a green that I liked that I wanted to add. Uh, you could certainly do just blues, you could do all greens, um, there's a lot of variation into the colors of the ocean so whatever color you prefer is what you should absolutely do for your ocean portion. And again, I'm just blending this out with a lot of water and I'm avoiding the dome of the jellyfish but I'm uh, going ahead and painting through where the tentacles will be because that part will also be blue. And in much the same way, I'm going to add some really dark blue and this is a color that uh, I really would have just done the whole background in this color because I love it so much, um, but I did want it to have that variation, so I just restrained myself a little bit. Once that whole section dries, I'm going to go in with an old toothbrush that I use just for painting, and I'm grabbing some of my lightest color and flicking it onto the painting, which uh, it gives lots of bubbles and makes it look uh, a little more under the sea. Thank you. 
And uh, after doing it with the light blue, I do some with the darker blue. And then I also will do some with the white, so that way I get some variation in the bubble color as well. And after I'm done with this step, um, I do go in and wipe out with a dry brush the part of the jellyfish that is the dome, just so I don't get tons of speckles on that. And then after letting it dry, uh, you see that the speckles have really given a lot of depth of color. So I take some blue and I'm going to just wash it over the whole background and using the same color and it's really watered down, I am unifying the whole background together. So all the, the layers and the stripes and the dots that we just did are the base layers to give it texture and differences and everything throughout. And then this color that I'm doing on top is to unify everything together. Now at this point, I am going to take a little bit of darker blue and stamp it around the paper. It's uh, very wet at this point, so I'm just going to stamp it and get it to kind of blend with the, the background color that we've put. And then I take a clean brush and wipe up a lot of that pigment to give this like modeled effect where it's almost um, in a, like a tie-dye kind of effect. And just really so that there's no one flat color across it since it's such a dynamic uh, background. Now after the background has completely dried, I am going to start in with the dome of the jellyfish. To do this I'm using the white gouache and some pink that I have mixed on my palette. Together this makes a really creamy color and uh, one of the interesting things about gouache is it's opaque and not translucent. So you can mix it with uh, watercolors, you can mix it with water to thin it out, but it is a um, opaque so when I paint it, it will actually cover some of the blue. And so I go in and just uh, fill in the dome of the jellyfish with this pink and then I'm going to mix a little bit of a lighter like bluey purple color to do the inside or like the underneath of the jellyfish's dome. Next, I take a very small brush and using some gouache mixed with whatever watercolors you'd like, uh, you go in and do the first tentacles. So I'm using a little bit darker uh, creamy pink than I did for the dome of the jellyfish or the head of the jellyfish. And as I'm putting in these tentacles, I'm just swirling and doing like a little S or um, ribbon shape and I'm making sure to have some of them come out of the very bottom and some of them come out of that center part that I painted the light purple because it's uh, the tentacles come out from all over the bottom not just in a straight line across one part of the bottom so you want to make sure there's like a depth of where they're coming from you also um, as you're doing them you don't need to dip your brush into the paint every single time you make a tentacle because there's going to be varying levels of transparency and boldness as you're looking at the front of the jellyfish all the way through to the back and as we build up layers of tentacles some of them will just be peeking through and some will be really prominent so uh, once you've done a few you switch colors and just keep layering them on so i've done pink and orange and just in between each layer i'm going to uh, of course rinse my brush and then 
as I'm letting these layers dry, I take a little bit of this darker pink and I'm gonna outline the jellyfish's dome and give a little bit of like just decoration and depth to the edges to make it look a little more um, uniform and prominent. And then I'm also doing some curved lines up towards the center, kind of like you would see on a beach ball, just to give a little effect of that spherical shape. And uh, I think that all will help bring in a little more defined look on the top of the jellyfish. Now where I just put that darker pink, I'm taking a brush with a little bit of water and just blending out the colors so that they are not stripes across the jellyfish as much as they are just um, subtle color changes across the jellyfish to give, again, that sense of depth but not like a harsh cartoon-like line and a more realistic look. And as I'm blending this out, I'm going section by section and only blending a section at a time so as to keep that, uh, that definition and to make it still look very spherical. Now that my first couple of layers of tentacles are dry, I'm going to go back in with my next layer. So I'm using a yellow this time and a little bit heavier hand to make a little bit thicker tentacles. So after laying in one of these tentacles, I take a little bit bigger brush and some more paint and I start kind of doing like a ruffly effect, like kind of maybe the way you would make clouds and really making that yellow tentacle um, really prominent and kind of fluffy looking, uh, the way you would see on a jellyfish, that kind of just extra layer of, um, I don't know, like a ribbony type of effect. And I'm going to take uh, some pink and do that as to one of the pink tentacles as well and just give a lot more volume to some of these tentacles. Next I'm adding some white details and I take the white gouache and I've put some dots down the side of one of the tentacles here and tried to make it look like they're the front and the back on some of the real puffy tentacles. I also am adding just some pure white tentacles throughout and just really quick, really thin, uh, just giving more depth and volume to the underside of the jellyfish. And similar to what I did with the white, I'm gonna do with some light pink. So I make some real thin light pink and I'm going to do some dotting down the side of the ruffly tentacles and just give more depths of layer.
With some of the leftover white and water on my brush, I'm just going to do some highlights on my jellyfish. Uh, this will help just to give a little shine to the parts of the jellyfish that are supposed to look a little more forward or popped out. And the white with a little bit of yellow in it is a nice highlight color to contrast the pinks on the dome of the jellyfish. Now I'm going to do just a little bit of blending in the bottom of the jellyfish. I'm taking some water and the tentacles up here are all mostly dry, but I'm just going to do a little bit of like blurring to tie them all together. Now this tool I'm using is called a bamboo stick and it's got a very fine point. So as I drag some of the wet paint that I've mixed up, down it's giving um, just some more texture and looks like some more very light tentacles uh, you could get this effect also by using a toothpick or the back end of a paintbrush um, you also could just take some really fine paintbrushes and do a little bit of a water drag and now for the finishing touch I am going to add a little bit of water to the white gouache and put it back on my toothbrush and just flick some white paint for some bubbles that are on top of the jellyfish and tie the background and foregrounds together. And there you have it, another completed painting. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, I really hope that you'll subscribe to my channel and view some of the old tutorials. I've got a bunch of different styles and techniques and I'm looking forward to painting with you some more. If you missed last week's video, you can click the link above to head over to it right now and give it a try. Thanks, see you next time.